Hello and welcome. Today I'll be showing you guys how to make a throne room for your V Rising castle. This video is the first in a five part series. Each part will show a different example and time lapse of how each one was made. I'll be explaining the process throughout each build so that you too can make an awesome throne room for your V Rising castle. I've also made several other videos on castle building and I'll be linking those in the description below. All right, now let's get started. Our first throne room build is what I like to call the classic. This throne room is on the smaller side using only two floors for the build. This layout is great for anyone who wants an easy layout that is sure to impress. Let's see how it's made. All right, so for the beginning of this build, I obviously have to start on the bottom floor. The ground floor itself is always the uh, core part of most throne rooms, whether the throne room is on the first floor or the second floor or the third floor of your castle. And you're gonna quickly see why once we get further into this build. Um, I decide to go with two staircases, straight long staircases facing northward and I decided to also move the heart into the little hidden area behind or under the throne area. If you notice in this build, I also use a lot of invisible foundation in order to uh, make sure that the spacing is uh, being acknowledged by things like pillars. So as we get further into this build, I'll start setting up pillars and stuff like that. But yeah, the setup initially is pretty simple and straightforward. Um, lots of windows on the sides. You can put pretty much anything you want on the windows. It doesn't have to be something that is um, maybe as fancy, but yeah, as soon as we start going into the pillars here, I start immediately messing around with the carpet. Part of the reason for this is that I wanted to make sure that the carpet is kind of fulfilling that fantasy of a grand throne room, but in a classic style. The reason why I call this a classic throne room is because I've seen this throne room layout uh, be very prominent, especially for like beginners and new peeps to the game. I think the reason why is because of its accessibility and its simple setup. And honestly, it looks pretty good. I really like this throne room setup myself as well. And not every throne room has to be all the way up to the third floor or even just sitting on the first floor. So I wanted to go with a happy medium here just for this example. As you can see, I start placing some chairs and furnishings. Laying the carpet down early on was really helpful. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but if you place down carpet in your castle, you get a movement speed bonus. So with me moving back and forth and running around, that definitely probably saved me maybe 20 seconds of time total, but hey, I'll take it. <laughs> At this point, I started messing around more with the furnishings. I started, you know, focusing more on the walls, adding curtains, adding, you know, different elements to kind of fill up the walls in a way that kind of gave it a little bit more life. Now with these statues throughout this build, you'll see me move them a lot. Uh, sometimes when you place things like statues, you're not quite sure what's going to be around them and you end up having to move your first furnishing or in this case, the statues. Uh, many times throughout the process in order to kind of get it to fit the way you want. Notice that when I'm putting up the chandeliers and lighting and stuff like that, I'm also kind of experimenting not just with the placement of the lighting, but with the colors because I decided to go with the red here just to kind of fit the thematic of the room. Uh, I didn't have to go with red. I could have gone with a natural light color and it still would have looked fine, but I just decided to go with red this time. You'll also notice that I changed the flooring several times throughout this build. It's not uncommon for me to swap the flooring uh, halfway through a build or maybe in the very beginning several times or even at the very end. Um, you never really know what your castle is going to end up looking like until you're absolutely done. And with just the two staircases leading up to the second floor and then having two rows of two tiles uh, sit back there just it gives you plenty of space to work with. I could have also maybe closed the space up top a little bit more around the throne to kind of give it more of a closed off feel, but I didn't think it was really necessary um, just for this tutorial anyway. At this point, 
point I was having trouble trying to figure out what kinds of items I wanted to place everywhere and I started experimenting with the carpets several times and the rugs and things like that. Um, a lot of times when you put together your initial carpet idea you might have to end up undoing it or redoing it or even kind of changing stuff up here. Um, but yeah, I ended up messing with the carpet several times throughout this build because you want um, an air of symmetry whenever you're trying to create a throne room. I think the most important part of creating a throne room is probably having some kind of symmetry because otherwise you don't really have that like grand feel or like that regal feel to a throne room. I added a little bit of plants in this area behind the throne. It's a little bit plain. And I didn't want to go too crazy for this build. Again, you see me swap out the carpet colors. I was very indecisive about that. In hindsight, I probably could have kept the black and been fine, but I didn't want the room to be too dark. Especially since the red was already a very dark color uh, within the room in several areas. So I didn't want all the colors to bleed together. So I had to be very careful about how I placed my furnishings. Again, it was very important to me to have symmetry on both sides. Now, it's not just a important to me part, it's a important to the build part because, like I said, that's, the symmetry is everything with a throne room. Um, this is one of the few times where I'll say that, like, symmetry is, like, extremely important. I've had builds before of, like, smaller areas of the castles that uh, are not symmetrical, but that is by design. But I feel like with the throne room, if something isn't symmetrical, it, it really throws the vibe off really, really fast because of how flashy it is or how important it is, uh, especially, you know, for a vampire castle, you want that throne room to look awesome. At this point, I started uh, working on the upper pillar lights and making sure that the lighting on the second floor was sufficient. And of course, I started going all the way around here. At this point, I started working underneath the throne. Now, a lot of people are going to say, oh, but isn't the throne room all that you can see with the throne? Yes, technically, but you can't really overlook areas where the throne hides. So having little areas like this behind your throne room, I think is really, really beneficial because it adds a little bit of character behind your throne. Um, some of the things that I was reading in some of the comments previously in my other videos is how people tend to hide their castle heart because they want to keep it secret and safe. And I thought that was kind of an interesting idea. I usually love to put my castle hearts fully on display, but in this case, I decided to go with the hide the heart method and put it underneath the staircases and underneath the second floor. So uh, each room here is kind of like a chill out room, uh, kind of, you know, a relaxing area to chat and chill or relax or just kind of get away from everyone. Um, I decided to put a little bit of, you know, bookshelves or I, I think I, at the end here, I ended up putting like bookshelves and stuff on the walls uh, so that, you know, you can kind of give this air of fantasy. And also what's really important is that both rooms are pretty much exactly the same. They're very symmetrical, but I use different paintings on the walls because you don't want paintings and things like that to be too redundant in your castle, I think. Especially so close together on the same floor. Um, so yeah, having the same layer of symmetry when it comes to the layout, but having different items definitely adds a little bit more character and as you can see here, we're pretty much wrapping up the end of this first build. It looks very, very nice. I actually ended up putting a crown on my castle heart, um, which honestly looked pretty cool. Some people put lights in there. They put all types of stuff. Uh, I've seen people use um, balefire sconces on like statues, like above statues and things like that, for example. And they'll like use it as like a crown on their uh, vampire statues. But yeah, this is this has definitely been a very nice build. Um, for the most part, it's fairly simple in the layout. Nothing too crazy. Um, you just have a staircase, uh, three squares, another staircase, and then uh, those staircases lead up to um, basically a two by four 
setup of squares where the castle throne is in the center. I hope that this first example of the classic has been very helpful for you guys to just kind of give some insight into the kind of thought process I go into when I build the castle throne rooms. And I hope that this is somewhat inspirational for those of you who might be newer to the game or maybe those of you who haven't really experimented much with throne rooms. I personally don't usually uh, put down a throne room in my castles like I, in whenever I build a castle uh, purely for leisure and not any kind of functionality. Uh, a lot of times I don't even include a castle throne because I just want to have other things in those areas. Um, but yeah, I, if, I know it's a very common thing to have in people's castles, especially on servers. So I wanted to make sure to create this series in order to go over that. Uh, I've also had questions regarding it and I've had people request videos like this. So yeah, there's going to be five parts. The reason why I decided to break this video up into five parts is because there are so many vastly different examples of castle thrones out there that really do not look like one another um they but they all share the same common theme of symmetrical you know things being symmetrical for the most part and even if like the exact items aren't used the shape of the items is similar enough that it looks symmetrical and that's probably one of the most important things like i said earlier about throne rooms themselves Thanks so much for watching this video going over how to build a throne room. This build is what I call the Skyward Throne. Part of the reason why is that you can actually see the sky since this is actually an outdoor throne. I wanted to make sure I showed examples of both indoor and outdoor throne rooms. And yeah, I definitely wanted to have a few of them featured in a garden setup. So for the beginning of this build, I immediately started placing down pillars. I started doing measurements, trying to make sure that everything I placed down made sense and the spacing was correct. So there was a lot of pre-planning kind of going on here with this build. I ended up putting up more and more columns. Everything started looking great. Now I started working on the second floor here, and this is where stuff starts to get complicated. Once you reach that second floor scenario, you get to a point where you have to make sure you're using your invisible foundation tiles appropriately. Otherwise, you're not really able to space out everything and having to go back and redo several sections over and over again can get pretty exhausting. So I definitely want to avoid that. So now that we've reached the third floor of the castle, I started going back and making the columns or the pillars high enough up that it kind of gave that very, you know, grand feel to this throne room. On the side here, I actually ended up placing a staircase as kind of like, I guess you could say scaffolding or something. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I used that to kind of get up higher to certain areas I couldn't reach. So maybe building this kind of long uh, tiled throne room might not be a bad idea to like kind of have spaces on the left and right sides where you can, you know, go up there and actually fix stuff started adding the bottom floor. I wasn't sure exactly how I wanted the window arrangements to be at first, but I knew that my color scheme, I wanted to have blue windows. Uh, something I did, which was kind of a little bit different than my normal builds, is I actually used the slightly lighter blue on the windows themselves, but then all the furniture and lighting and everything else used the dark blue. Part of the reason why is that I wanted it to pop a little bit more, be a little bit brighter, and I thought that the dark blue windows just kind of bled into the um, curtains a little too much. At this point, I remove my body from the screen and I start uh, going wild with my decorating here. This function that I use to do this is called toggle observe you can use it in the console if you type in toggle observe one it makes your body completely invisible so now that i got the third and first floors kind of figured out a little bit i was like okay the sun is shining nicely into this area but i really want to have something on the second floor i started thinking more and more about this layout and as you can see the lighter blue on the windows definitely makes it shine a lot better in the daytime 
Occasionally, you'll see me go up in the sky and double check my work, making sure everything is symmetrical. We're going back to that symmetrical method as we did in the previous Castle Throne Room tutorial. And I wanted to make sure that, you know, I kind of showed different examples of how that technique or how that is very important when it comes to a throne room. At this point, it was just a lot of going back, making corrections, deciding where I wanted the windows. I ultimately decided to go for a every other window method and then just kind of did an interchangeable window setup on the front end of this build. And on the very back, I actually removed the windows to try and account for the fact that you're not even going to see that part of the throne room once it's completed here. When I was messing around with this throne, trying to decide which one to place down and kind of wiggling it back and forth to measure it, uh, in hindsight, I probably should have used a tile flooring to make sure that my alignment was better, and it probably would have saved me a couple seconds of time there. At this point, I started adding more and more lighting and I use the Balefire sconces. I, you guys know I love to use those on the outdoor stuff because they're the ones that have like the big flame. Um, very, very cool. I love those hanging lanterns. And I started adding some shrubbery to the outside. Well, more not the outside, but more like the walls uh, that go along the sides of the throne room area. And I wanted to make sure to keep a, a constant feel and look to be very consistent so that all of the pillars and all the stuff eventually does get covered in the castle wall vegetation. At this point, it's just me trying to reach all the way back, trying to make sure I hit all the crispy angles in order to get exactly what I want. And of course I waited till nighttime, then I came back, decided to work on this a little bit more. I decided to use different curtains. Uh, I didn't want to use a super floofy curtain for this build per se, just because it is an outdoor build. So you don't necessarily want some like crazy indoor looking um, curtains in order to kind of accomplish the look, so I ended up going with the third option. At this point, there was more and more and more things I needed to add on the walls. The walls took a very long time in order to get them all completely covered without missing anything. Um, you know, this level of detail and dedication isn't something that I expect most people to like kind of take the time to do, but when someone actually does go through all that effort, it tends to look pretty cool. At this point, I was kind of starting to think about what I wanted to do underneath the staircase, and soon you'll be seeing me kind of make uh, my rounds there. But before I did that, I ended up creating uh, pathways on the left and right side underneath the staircase on the second floor, just so I can access all of the spots I missed that I couldn't see from the platform itself. Eventually, I do end up removing those with invisible foundation, though. The reason why there's so much invisible foundation when it comes to the pillars and the way that it works is that if you have a, a pillar that's kind of freestanding and you want to add another pillar on top to extend the height of it, there has to be some kind of foundation attached to it in order for that to work. So that's why I've been using a lot of the invisible foundation here. Don't be afraid to add temporary foundation just to stand on so you can reach those areas of the castle that maybe are a little bit harder to get to or out of reach because you can always go back and remove it with invisible foundation. At this point, I started working on the bottom area, and you can see that I'm starting to put more lighting down here. I'm starting to think a little bit more about what I want, and I decided I wanted this area right underneath or right behind the staircase 
uh, well, the first staircase to be more of a horse enclosure, so that was cool. I was thinking more and more about what to put underneath here because I knew I wanted a garden, maybe with some kind of sitting area. At first I started putting a fountain here, but then ultimately I decided to remove it. Uh, you'll see me experimenting with various bushes of different kind. Um, because I am in the Silverlight area with this plot, I decided to kind of follow the theme of the kind of RNG floor. And of course, it's important to uh, have enough blood in your system to continue the build, so that's what that was right there. These horse statues were kind of a pain to put together. Well, they're not statues, they're actually hedges. Part of the reason was that I wanted to have flowers sprout up from the base of them, but I thought maybe the blue flowers would work, but they weren't actually tall enough to be visible. So I thought a little bit more about it, and ultimately I ended up going with sunflower seeds. It took me several tries to get this right. And of course the sunflowers actually look pretty nice. I realized I had to redo that one though because I realized that it was a little misaligned and I didn't want them to be misaligned for the build. At this point I'm just trying to add a little bit more shrubbery to the area, trying to create a little bit more life on this halfway point between the first and third floors of the castle. I also was kind of experimenting with what kind of pathing I wanted to use as far as garden pathing goes. I changed it a couple of times, I believe, and in the end, I didn't end up going with this particular pavement. I wanted to add archways on the sides so that it was very obvious to any visitors that they could walk through the tunneled areas. I wanted it to feel kind of like a tall tunnel, even though it wasn't really underground. I started adding some planters, you know, trying to kind of feed into the life that was already there with all of the shrubbery that had already been added. And of course, you can't have a nice garden without somewhere to sit, so I started placing some benches. Then I started getting a little bit more detailed with my build. I started adding a few lots, and because I used the grass tiles, I was able to use the regular planting plots directly on the ground rather than having to use a square planter. I also wanted to add some bird baths to uh, kind of give the place a little bit of life. This is the part where I start messing around with the different types of tiles, and I think at this point, I, I think this is when I made the decision to uh, swap to the one that I ultimately went with. I decided to enclose the horse hedges on the back with a bunch of hedges and created a small sitting area. I messed around with the flooring a lot here because I couldn't quite decide what color combination I wanted, but it wasn't just about the color combinations. I also had to focus on what setup I wanted and how I wanted things to be looked at. So the separation of the tiles by the grass was very important because it kind of tells you where you can place furniture and things like that and the space look like it's actually designated for that purpose. I also added some cypress trees because I think they look nice. And of course I have my white cherry blossom trees. Man, those trees, they grow up so fast. 
I'm just kidding. I just sped up the time, but you know. <laughs> and of course, I put down some planters in the horse area without any shrubbery. And part of the reason for that, well, when I say without any shrubbery, I mean on the actual thing, but I did put some snow flowers in there. But the reason why was because I wanted it to look like a feeding area for the horses. So I'm pretty happy with how it ended up in the end. And as you can see, I started adding more of these planters on the side, just trying to fill up the space in a way that kind of made sense without being too repetitive. And I think the hard part was just getting the snowflowers to be underneath the different planters as well. This is where things start to get a little bit interesting. I put a... I put an emphasis on the hedges here to try and get a nice rounded appearance around the throne or around the back of the throne and I had just enough space to add two more white cherry blossoms back there so I felt like I might as well throw them in. This part where I started lining the base of the throne was a little bit more complicated. Um, getting the flowers to be perfectly aligned in the places that I want it was really a very tedious process. I think that's one of the hardest things to do for like any kind of outdoor environment in a castle is when you're planting individual plants like that. It's just, it's very, it's not only time consuming, but if you mess up one thing, it throws off the flow and having to go back and correct it later is not ideal. I knew I wanted to have some seats or something up here. So I ended up going back to the sunflowers uh, for those horse hedges as well. Then I put down some seating. I kept some water fountains to try to create a little bit of uh, visual variety in the area. And of course we can't have a thrown outside without some kind of cover. And uh, yeah, d ended up using the mist makers here. And we're getting closer and closer to completion. At this point, I'm just kind of going back and filling in areas that looked a little too plain, a little bit too uninhabited. Uh, I didn't want any part of this build to look like it was a forgotten area or something that I just neglected to decorate. So that was kind of big. And of course, I added that gate in the front, which added a little bit more uh, pizzazz to this build. So if you wanted to do something like this in your castle and have it as like a exclusive outdoor part of the castle, if you have a really big plot like this, um, you could definitely do that. At this point, I started experimenting with the heights of the garden planters, and I really like how I have them set up in front of the throne there. I think it just looks really cool. And of course, I can't forget uh, these statues here, the horse statues. I wanted to make sure that I had some kind of shrubbery in there to try and um, complete the look. I think at this point I was just double checking, making sure I didn't forget anything, doing my last uh, walk around look, my last patrol. This build was kind of tedious to make, but it did look really cool in the end, I think. Oh yes, and I almost forgot to add some lighting. I noticed a couple of mistakes in the back and yeah, that's how we got this uh, build completed. So tell me, what do you guys think of this build? Is this something you'd be interested in adding into your castle? If so, let me know in the comments below. This example is what I like to call the basic throne room. This throne room is as basic as you could probably get, uh, just having one floor and nothing too wild or crazy going on. I wanted to show at least one example that's super approachable for especially the early game and also 
just very easy to replicate. So that way you guys feel like you have some options as far as um, different throne room designs that could definitely make your castle look really, really cool. I immediately started with the wallpaper for this build because I already kind of knew what I wanted to do for that. The flooring, however, was a little bit harder to decide. And I actually ended up going with the first tier carpet and that is the one without the gold accents. But here uh, in the beginning, I had the, go the gold one at first, the one with the gold trim. Um, but I ended up changing that later. Immediately start placing some servant coffins. Notice the room is also symmetrical, just like the two previous examples. What's really cool about this setup is that even though this example is on the first floor, you can easily see this also being replicated on several other different floors of your castle. I ended up removing the window behind the throne because I wanted to make sure that there was enough light on either side and because there was an odd number of windows I didn't want to add anything behind it because I thought it would be a little overpowering with the glow. At this point I start adding some curtains, kind of experimenting with windows, and I ended up switching them to the clear windows because even though the green glass would have looked cool, I kind of wanted more natural sunlight coming in through the windows for this build. At this point, I started looking at pillars, trying to decide whether or not I wanted to add any, but because of where they were going to be placed, I ultimately decided not to add them. I decided to line the room with carpets on both the left and right hand sides, and as you can see here, this is when I swap out the carpet for the basic one. In front of each statue, I added some braziers. I really like when the black statues have that ominous glow underneath them. Something about the shine of the ominous glow of green on the statues, or even purple, which I've done in a previous build, it's very interesting. As I thought more about it, I thought, well, maybe I should use some crypt flooring. I was kind of toying with the idea of crypt flooring here, and I think I ultimately did decide to go with it. Now it's only up to the lighting. I started going around the room, adding some balefire sconces. Not the ones that hang, but the ones that are right on the pillars. And then of course on the angles of the room or the corners of the room, I decided to put a banner just to kind of fill up the space.
I really like green and how it looks in this room. Something about the gray walls with the green coloration here it just really, really stands out to me. At this point, I started adding some minor details to try and spruce up the room a little bit, but I knew I didn't want to go too crazy because this is supposed to be a kind of a beginner friendly room setup. And ultimately, I think it came out pretty well. So what do you guys think of this build? Do you think you would do something like this in your castle? Do you think that the build is, you know, be as beginner friendly as I think it is? Or do you think it's still a little bit complicated? Let me know in the comments below. This throne room is something that I would like to call the afterthought. Now, not everyone wants to make an elaborate, beautiful throne room, but hey, you gotta put it somewhere, right? So if you're anything like myself and you tend to forget where anything goes, uh, you definitely want to take the time to maybe plan out where you're going to eventually place it. Now with this particular build, I've decided to kind of go with a three story high, basically a build that you could either have in the front of your castle, the back of your castle, sides, uh, wherever pretty much you want, because the size of it in this uh, particular space isn't particularly large compared to the size of the rest of the plot. So yeah, you have some options here. Um, I definitely wanted to kind of create spaces where it looks like you could host guests or even just have a good old time. So if you notice here, I started adding the windows onto the third floor. I have already placed down the throne. And at this point, I started closing up all the stuff to make sure that we had a roof over everything. And I think this is around the time I start decorating. Yep, there we go. And I start placing down a foundation. I decided to go with a library flooring, the new one, the super light colored one, which I really, really like a lot. Um, I think I like it because of the contrast it has with the walls being as dark as they are if I decide to go with a purely wooden wall. And I also decided to go with purple as the color theme for this particular build. At this point, I'm just adding details to the walls, making sure everything is covered, making sure everything pretty much has what it needs. And I started experimenting a little bit with rugs and carpets here just to kind of figure out what I wanted to do. And I knew I wanted to close off the sides as bedrooms for guests. So I decided to place that there. And of course I had to add some music while I was working on this. Can't have a super quiet uh, castle while I'm working on stuff. Would be a little boring, wouldn't it? At this point, I'm kind of choosing what furniture I want to use in the two rooms on the second floor. Um, I started making little nooks and stuff. I decided to make kind of a book nook like I have in previous examples. I think it was the one tile uh, video where I showed that initially. But yeah, I really, really like this idea and I decided to keep the little uh, dresser area visible and as part of the bedroom as an open part. I started experimenting with different paintings, different things I could possibly use here, different rug types and things like that. But I knew that for sure I wanted everything to be purple. Of course, you can't have a nice cozy room without a fireplace, so I had to make sure to add that in as well. At this point, trying to figure out what coloration I wanted was a little bit uh, more challenging, especially because the room is so small. Uh, but I ultimately decided to add a white light above the dresser area just so that while your vampire is doing their makeup or whatever the heck they're doing, they're not uh, 
distorting the colors and they know exactly what they look like. That's assuming the mirrors even work, that is. I kind of played with the idea of putting some vines behind the chair, but I didn't think it made much sense, so I ultimately decided not to do that. I wanted this room to look kind of like the other room, but mirrored and a little bit different. I don't want the rooms to be exactly the same in this case because there's only two other bedrooms. But I think this setup would be really nice for like a couple of vampires who just want to chat and chill. At this point, I started trying to figure out where to put the vampire lock boxes. I figured it maybe it'd be a good idea to keep a couple of them around just in case. Now on the second floor, I started working on kind of a similar setup, but then I ended up going back downstairs and kind of revisiting the entryway. I decided to add some portraits in the hallway to give it a little bit of life. I also added some plants, or as I like to say, shrubbery to the build. And I also thought maybe adding a couple of benches in the entryway wasn't a bad idea either. On the second floor, I wanted to create kind of a library area or like a reading area, like an exclusive kind of library. That way, if there were any tomes or anything that, you know, a vampire could possibly want to read through, they definitely have quick access to that above. And it would also be a nice area for people to relax in, especially if you have any guests come over. At this point, I started experimenting with uh, some candle stands, trying to figure out the spacing so that the lighting in the room wasn't overwhelming in any specific area. And with a little bit of tinkering, I think I got the room just right. At this point, I started adding more decorations on the second floor, some banners, some curtains, things like that. And this other room on the second floor is actually going to be the servants quarters. I had a little bit of a dresser here with a, a little bit of carpet. Didn't want to make it too, too fancy, but I also didn't want it to look distasteful. <laughs> Ultimately, I decided to get rid of the dresser and just put down a mirror with a secretaire. And I think that look just kind of made it seem a little bit better. On the third floor, I'm over here just working on some of the lighting and balance. Now, something that's really important when you're putting a throne together isn't just symmetry. I wanted the room to look just symmetrical enough so that things would be very similar, but I also wanted to create a feeling of power in the room. And what better way to do that than adding some prison cages? I also added some tables and chairs so that guests could dine and wine, I guess. Wine and dine, I guess you could say, in this particular case. The 
The hard part was figuring out how I wanted to place the carpet in relation to the tables and chairs. I ended up moving the tables and chairs quite a few times just to get it just right into that empty square of space. I'm pretty happy with the color scheme of this room. I think going with the purple was a good idea. It has a really regal feel to it and I think it looks really nice. The hard part was trying to get the throne and this carpet to align in a way that I liked. So that was a little bit of a challenge, but eventually I got it just right and was able to move on to the statues and other elements I wanted to add to this build. I decided to go with the same statue facing two different ways, but facing the center to kind of give a little bit more of a grand feel to the room, even though the room is relatively small compared to other castle builds I've done. And I added a few pillars in here just to add a little bit of uh, extra visual variety around the staircase because I didn't want it to look too much like just a hole in the ground. started messing around with bureaus and spacing things out, added some wine cases, added more shrubbery, as I like to say, with uh, the various plants and stuff. Had quite a bit of experimentation around the staircase because I wanted this area to not overwhelm or outperform the look of the throne itself. So that's why I used the purple lighting around the throne, whereas the rest of the room has its own uh, natural lighting color. I decided to add a center column on the second floor, mostly to split the staircase. started messing around with the chandeliers and I decided to make the chandeliers purple just to kind of follow the theme of hey important people are here <laughs> whenever the color purple is present. At this point, I start going back, adding little tiny details to the hallways, adding a little bit more life to them. I also ended up swapping out one of the plants for a candle stand on the third floor. I thought maybe I had too many plants around the staircase. And at this point, I started working on the outside. Now, the outside was a little bit more difficult for me. I'm never really good at building gardens and things like that. Um, I've had requests to like make guides on like gardens and things, but I, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that, guys. I'd have to spend a lot of time practicing with the, um, with the pieces for the gardens. But I don't know. If you guys really want to see that, just let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll take the time to, to make that. I started working around the doors with some lighting. I wanted to create a little bit of light around the door so you could tell the difference between certain types of doors, like the inner doors and the outer doors, because the inner and outer doors do not lead to the same place. So I wanted to make it somewhat clear that that was the case. I thought it was a little too bright in front of the doors, so I added some bird baths instead. Add a little bit of shrubbery to the sides with some garden planters. And I also kind of experimented a little bit with the colors of the shrubbery. I decided to go with the pointy ones. And I used the three different heights. I decided to change up the flooring on, at the last minute on the outdoor area because I felt that some areas needed to kind of stand out more than others. 
and then I ended up going back to the third floor and trying to kind of add a little bit more life to the section behind the staircase or above the staircase. So what do you guys think about the afterthought? Does it feel like an afterthought or do you think it still stands prominently amongst the other thrones that we've seen so far in this series? Let me know in the comments below. This next build is what I like to call the Caged Throne. This is another outdoor castle build, but with a tall building behind it rather than around it. For this build, I started working on the outside. Of course, at first, I already knew I wanted to have a caged in outdoor feel for the first floor. I added the throne. And originally I was gonna go with the Throne of Darkness, but I ultimately ended up going with the Gloomrot Throne instead. You'll see that change later on in this video. At this point, I was just building the second floor, trying to get the columns set up, trying to get the height of everything correct, because I knew I could always go back and make some changes to try and get the desired shape I wanted. These staircases that you see in the center of the build eventually do get deleted and I ended up moving some staircases to the back of the area behind the throne. It took a little bit of trial and error trying to get the staircases to behave and place themselves in a way that I liked. and. I did have a little bit of a hard time trying to get it to align in a way that I really liked in general. Because of the limitations with the staircases and not being able to place them freely, I decided to kind of just make a second floor that would just kind of go around the outside of the area. As you can see, I went through a lot of trial and error here with the staircases. That was probably the hardest part of this build, honestly. Originally, I was going to kind of add a solid ground to the ground floor, but ultimately I ended up changing that as well. You'll see that later in the build. Behind the area where I would eventually put the throne, I had to make an enclosed building because I wanted to make it seem like the throne was just sitting caged outside, but it was still um, part of the castle. I added more caging to the outside. When I say caging, I mean that it kind of just looks like a cage in general. Again, I started thinking about using the Throne of Darkness here, but as soon as I realized how much space that throne actually took up in this area, and I knew I wanted to add more flowers and shrubbery and things, I did end up changing it later. Um, I started messing around with the walkways, trying to figure out how I wanted to lay it out first, kind of pre-planning the setup, and I wanted there to be symmetry because again, going back to those basic principles, going back to the basic uh, things we've learned earlier in this series, we want to have a little bit of symmetry. I started placing some cypress trees, making sure that everything I placed was an exact replica on both the left and right sides. At this point, I added some white cherry blossoms. I really love those trees. They're so cool looking. Added a couple statues in the back, and this is the part where I decided, you know what? I'm gonna get rid of the Throne of Darkness. It takes up too much space, and I wanted to have something a little bit more inviting. So I decided to go with the Gloomrod Throne. 
as you can see, I was tediously going around trying to make sure that my placement of the flowers was going to be aligned correctly. It was a little bit of a challenge. I also started experimenting a little bit with statues, trying to figure out what statues I wanted in each corner. Once I figured that out, I just continued to place some plots. And it was a little bit of a challenge trying to get the flowers to not clip too, too much through the statues. This part is really tedious, but when it's done, I think it was totally worth it. And of course, we can't have an outdoor throne without any mist braziers. We need to have those. By using different plot types for the flowers, I created artificial spaces where certain groups of flowers look like they just belong to each other or belonged in a group. And then I ended up using the bleeding hearts at the end. It's rare that I get to use this flower in any of my builds because it has a very distinct look to it that I haven't quite figured out how to work out yet uh, because it is a newer flower. But I think I did a pretty good job of lining everything up. I rotated the flowers as I went to make sure that they were all facing the same direction from each corner so that there weren't any uh, stragglers in the group. I went back into the sky, got an aerial view, got a better idea of what I wanted to accomplish here. And I went behind the throne, added some stuff to the back. I was thinking a little bit about what I wanted to do. I sped up time. I wanted to see what the flowers and trees looked like fully bloomed. Then I checked from the sky and I was pretty satisfied with that. So I ended up moving on to the third floor, actually skipping the second floor for a little bit. And I decided to add a little bit of extra area to hang out in. Um, but I also wanted to kind of create a storeroom for the plants and types of shrubbery we have outside, of course. I was experimenting with the colors here, but I ultimately went with black. I think black was a very solid color to go with here. I didn't want anything that was too visibly different from the surrounding wallpaper because the wallpaper in the flooring has a lot going for it. So I didn't want to overwhelm the space with too much detail. Added a few wine cases just for a little bit of extra pizzazz, of course. And with the lighting, I was kind of careful about the lighting. I wanted to make sure there was plenty of lighting around the bookcases and not so much right on top of the sofa area in front of the fireplace. I ended up adding two of the standing books there because I figured, well, if anyone needs to look up any kind of plants or anything, they can probably find it in one of those books. And I also added some white light to make sure it was easy to read. I also wanted to make it distinct from the fireplace, which has a natural light. So I wanted to make sure that the spaces look distinct from the fireplace. At this point, I started messing around with the uh, draperies, trying to choose a color. And I started working on the third floor balcony area, which was a square around the throne. I had a little bit of fun playing with the shrubbery here, just trying to get different kinds of uh, colors and combinations to look right. And of course I went with a white lighting for the balcony area. At this point, I knew I wanted to have a chandelier somewhere above the throne, but also have one on the second floor above the throne. This was a little bit of a challenge and you'll see what I mean later on. I made a couple of mistakes while first placing these down, so I ended up having to remove some and go back and revise.
I also had some planters to separate things out just to create a little bit more visual variety. I didn't want too many hedges too close to each other and I needed spaces of separation. Added a couple of bird baths and then at this point I went to the second floor and started working on that. I added some nice windows so that behind the throne in the building above there would at least be some kind of windows so that people can look outside and see the beautiful garden. I really like the pieces from the Castlevania set. I really think that they did such a wonderful job on the wallpaper. It looks so cool. And the fact that you have so many different variations of that wallpaper, it just, I mean, the possibilities are endless, really. And of course, the second floor was more of an herb storage room because obviously you have to pull the plants from the first floor, so you're not wanting to carry them all the way to the third floor. That's why there's so few of the storages on the third floor. And of course, on the second floor here, you can also see me working on some other stuff. I ended up closing out uh, one of the rooms. I wish that we had a piece that would just block out an entire room so that it was just at least filled with something. Uh, cause I don't like hiding rooms like that. And I ultimately ended up putting an invisible foundation just to hold that place. At this point, I started messing around, trying to see how many of these storage containers I could possibly squeeze in this room. And of course we can't uh, have a room like this without placing our flowers. And as you saw there, I rotated those bleeding hearts in the planter. That way the plants looked as big as possible. At this point, I started messing around with the lights, trying to get the skylights to work out. And we're done. So what do you guys think of this build? Did you like the caged throne? Is this something you'd consider adding to your castle? Let me know in the comments below. For those of you who don't know, my name is Sholo Q. I'm a Sholo Eats Quaintly Reaper and Guide to the Underworld. I stream three times a week on Twitch, Kick, and YouTube, and you can find me playing V Rising usually on Wednesdays. I hope to see you there. If you like this video, please leave a like, share, and subscribe. And as always, Sholo out.